have you here with us. If you're joining us live on this session or you might be watching this session back on our YouTube channel, The Exchange. So hello to you in the future watching this and welcome to you watching this live with us today on our online broadcast. So everyone's just arriving. Welcome. Please take a seat. Good morning, Chloe. Good morning, Carolyn. Good morning, Roberto. Welcome. Grab a coffee, grab a cup of tea. Good morning to you joining now. Uh, welcome to Ask X Factor Live. If you haven't been here before, it's your first time, a very big welcome. If this is um, another session that you're jumping into in the last couple of weeks, welcome back to you. We're delighted to have you here with us again. This has been an 18-week pilot for us, and we are up to week 15, can you believe? Um, and I'm so excited to have... Darren Taylor, brand strategist here today for you to listen to, to learn from and to take away some really good ideas and inspiration today to really propel you as a human being to achieve your human potential, but also your organization's potential. So very excited to be sharing Darren with you today. Welcome Robbie, welcome everybody who's joining. Welcome Catherine, welcome. Uh, please take a seat, great to have you here. Um, so let me just tell you, my name is Julia Keady. I am your host this morning. Uh, some of you have already heard me do my introduction over the last couple of weeks, but I am the founder and the CEO of the X Factor Collective and also the host of Ask X Factor Live. If you haven't heard of the X Factor Collective, that's okay. Um, it's only fairly new this year, um, but we're really ramping up and we're having a great time building a community of amazing consultants and coaches and mentors that you can come and connect with wherever, whenever you need to um, on your journey with your organization now and into the future. Uh, for those who don't know me, um, I've been around the social impact sector for the last 10 years. A highlight of that for me was being the CEO of the Australian Women Donors Network, um, where I got to meet a lot of people in the social impact sector, running a big network uh, with philanthropists and grant makers and all the amazing social purpose organizations as well as working with a lot of consultants and specialist agencies to really propel um, our mission at Women Donors Network. And I learned a lot about what was missing in the sector in terms of building uh, communities and clusters and collaboration. From there, I became a bit of an accidental consultant and I accidentally did that for about seven years. <laughs> um, and it was during that time that I got to work with a lot of different organizations across the landscape, from community foundations, to social enterprises, to private philanthropists, as well as working with a lot of other consultants on projects. And I could see that perhaps we could make life a bit easier for all social change makers um, if we could just bring people together and think about the ways that we can make life easier, a bit cheaper and a bit more fun to be, um, to be caring about the planet and caring about people um, and get our job done. So I decided that we needed a collective um, that we could help uh, social change makers connect, um, collaborate and innovate if we all worked uh, closely together. Um, and to help people find the answers that they need when they need it and not have to be, you know, asking around for the right person to talk to or Googling and trying to find the right person. So we did, we're building a collective and we have launched with our first 30 foundation members and we're growing that out to 100, foundation, 100 members, 100 consultants and coaches across 300 areas of specialization. So whether it's something to do with fundraising or strategic planning, communications, technology, HR, governance, whatever it might be, you can come and find that here and we can support you on your journey. So tell you a little bit more about the X Factor Collective a bit later on. Before I introduce you to the amazing Darren Taylor, I just wanna let you know today a little bit about the format. We have seven great questions that Darren is gonna be working through with us over the next 45 minutes. We are here to answer your questions as well. That's what this is all about. So if you've got a burning question about brand, about your brand, what might not be working or working with it and you want to ask Darren today, please feel free to do that. Now is your opportunity. Uh, we're using Zoom's webinar technology for today's session. And there's two different ways that you can connect with us and ask questions. One is in the chat box. You'll see the chat box down the bottom of your screen. There's also a Q&A box there. So feel free to use either the chat box or the Q&A box to pop your questions in there and we'll make sure we get to those today. 
if your link drops out and it's not strong for some reason and you need to dial back in, that's fine. If you have a look in your chat box right now, you'll see that there's two phone numbers and a code an ID number uh, to enter if you need to call back in. So just make a note of that there in the chat box so you've got that there for yourself. Excellent. Well, let's jump into it. We've got some amazing content um, to get through today. Excited to introduce you to this wonderful man. I've had the privilege of knowing Darren for about 30 years. Um, we actually went to school together, which is pretty amazing. Um, and Darren is the managing director of an incredible brand agency based in Melbourne called Taylor and Grace. And he's also a foundation member of the X Factor Collective. Um, just by way of introduction, Darren has helped hundreds of organisations align their mission um, and their values and has helped hundreds of organisations create really strong differentiation in the market. And Darren's going to talk about the importance of that today. He's also helped a number of organisations or hundreds of organisations understand how a brand strategy can help them stay on mission um, to grow and fend off the competition and create and maintain a really positive working culture. So welcome, Darren. We're excited to have you here today. You're in sunny Sydney. Good morning. Good morning, Julia. <laughs> Good morning. How are you? No, I, 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 don't, I suppose I don't need to yell. It's uh, the technology <laughs> sort of works it out, yeah? Yes, we can hear you from Sydney. Great, great. Good. <laughs> Good. How uh, are you today? I'm very, very well indeed. Thank you. It's a, it's, it's a balmy 24 here. Balmy 24, beautiful, beautiful. Mm. Well, Melbourne's just being Melbourne and sunscreen one minute and umbrellas the next. Right. <laughs> and, and we're only five minutes in and we've resorted to talking about the weather. Yeah, that's right. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, Darren, I guess before we jump into some of this content today, can you share with mm. us a bit about yourself? And in particular, how does someone become a brand consultant and so passionate about this topic. Can you share with us a bit about your background? Yeah, sure. Um, uh, it was probably, I'm a bit of a, bit of a, an odd beast in that, that I've studied engineering and chemical engineering uh, to, 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 to be specific, or also um, uh, some more artistic creative pursuits like um, um, musical theater, um, musical performance, and, um, with piano and pipe organ. Um, uh, and I have also done a marketing degree and studying um, languages as well. So I've done a whole lot of things. And, and it wasn't until I started my, my first agency in, my, my first and only agency, I should say, uh, in uh, 2012, sorry, 2006, um, I, I wanted to put it all together. So brand has this beautiful marriage of, of rational, emotional, of strategic and creative. And uh, uh, so, so that's, that's, uh, that's what brought me to, to, to branding and also just the, the um, uh, endless fascination I have with intangible things. Hmm. That's a great fascination to have. <laughs> <laughs> Intangible yeah. things. Yeah. That's yeah. Fantastic. Great. Excellent. Well, we're delighted to have you here today and thank you so much for, um, for sharing yourself with us this morning. Let's jump into some of the questions that we've got here, shall we? Um, the first question here, Darren, is um, brand means different things to different people, obviously, um, but we're really interested in how do you define brand? Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's interesting. Um, I think it must be very difficult for people in organizations to, uh, to understand what brand is because there are so many definitions and some of them are even contradictory, which is, is always helpful. Um, so I, uh, I wrote a book, um, uh, a few years ago, uh, and I decided that I'd come up with my own definition. Um, and, um, it, it did take some time, but um, I define brand as the expression of a, a person, product, service, uh, or business as expressed, sorry, as, as created by the, um, uh, the owner and perceived by the world. So as expressed, as, as uh, 
created by the owner and, um, and perceived by the world. So a couple of things in that is that ultimately, and a, a guy called Marty Neumeier, who's one of my brand heroes, um, talks about brand is not what we think it is. It is what they think it is. They being uh, our, varying, our various audiences, so our, our, our staff, our customers, our prospects, etc. So, um, <clears throat> so w while ultimately it is, is up to what, what, what the people think, uh, we do have some control over that. Mm -hmm. So, um, and so we create, we design, this is where the engineering comes in, I suppose. Mm -hmm. We design a brand to be perceived in a particular way. Ultimately, it's up to people what they think but we have some control over it. And, and in my experience, a lot of organisations, uh, and particularly in the, um, the, the social enterprise as, um, uh, for purpose organisation space, um, don't um, utilise that lever enough to uh, drive their organisation forward, yeah. Interesting, interesting. I like the way that you just, I like the definition of that created by the owner, but perceived by the world. Mm -hmm. like that it's very hard to find very short um, ways that the brand is, yeah. brand is described. Do you know, yeah. that's very, um, there's a lot in that though, isn't there, which we can yeah. unpack now. Yeah. Right. And this, like, sorry, darling. Is it, is it, um, there's another, um, element to that and that um, Michael Eisner who was the CEO of Disney for a long time and of course Disney is one of the most uh, iconic brands in the world um, um, so then they know, know a thing or two about branding uh, he talks about a brand is something that can be enriched or undermined um, every day uh, by thousands and millions of gestures um, so you think about your people, your products, your physical environment, your communications, all um, uh, saying, expressing your brand um, in, the, in the day of, a, of an organisation that can be quite significant number of opportunities to either undermine or enrich it. So, um, so there, therein lies the, the challenge for a lot of organisations. Yeah, particularly right. when they're of size, some size. Yes. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm. I'm interested now moving into the next question and talking about, um, I guess, the lever that you just mentioned, you know, being able to use this as a lever within your organisation. Yeah. Um, and the question is, what are some of the benefits of having a really strong brand for your organisation? Okay. Um, I'll, I think fundamentally... It helps you exist. It helps you survive. It helps you to be sustainable. Um, uh, competition in, in most interest, industries is is at an all time high, uh, and there are so many things that an organisation, you know, internal factors, external factors, they don't have control of, of um, that do affect their brand and their organisation. But brand is one thing that they can. Uh, if, if they know how to harness uh, brand, they can use that as a, as a, as a lever of, of, of growth, of improvement, of um, uh, enrichment. So, yeah, um, I'm not sure whether I answered your question there. I think I, I answered <laughs> well, the question. Well, there's some of the benefits. So you've got the benefits so, around yes. Um, yes. existing um, in a yes. competitive world, yes. surviving yes. in a competitive yes. world. Yeah. Um, what is what, what might be some of the benefits from an internal point of view? So, I think um, understanding what makes you remarkable as an organisation, and I have gone into so many, and I'm sure you have too, Julia, uh, gone into so many organisations, and you know, uh, done the research on on. Uh, on them, their website, maybe some collateral. Um, and then you go and meet the people that have either created it or are, are behind it and are extremely passionate and, and um, um, determined. And, uh, and, and the, all the communications that you're exposed to just seems to fall short of expressing what makes them remarkable. Right. So, 
So what is it that makes you remarkable? Um, and finding a way to agree on that and express that um, at all um, available opportunities, that, that, is, that is really, so find, find, find what, what remarkable. Another benefit is that you can charge a premium. Right. Yeah, if, if, if that's relevant to your business, because mm. people come to you because of you, um, and the fact that there might be 17 uh, parity products or services or organizations is irrelevant because they want to deal with you. Um, and <clears throat> um, the other thing I would say is that uh, it aligns the organization uh, to, to one voice, one um, sense of who we are and why we matter. Mm. And why is that important? Mm. Because, um, <clears throat> because a lot of organisations have a great purpose, but they don't uh, particularly, you know, it's particularly challenging with a disparate work, workforce, geogra ge geographically spread workforce. Mm. So I have a bit of a cold, so I'm... Um, <clears throat> you sound, um, sounding great. Oh, really? Cold. I yeah. should have, so you're telling me I should have a cold more often? Um, Absolutely. <laughs> So, um, um, uh, so when yeah. you've got a disparate so, work, uh, workforce, yeah, yeah, yeah. So bringing bringing people together behind the brand, mm. uh, so that they live and breathe the values, the essence, the proposition, is really, really important because I'll give you an example. Um, how often have you gone into a retail store and you've found that um, once you've got home, it's, it's not right and you have to call a call centre, right? So you've had a really positive experience. It was really efficient and quick and every, the, the advice was great. And then you get on the, the phone to the call centre and they're not very helpful at all. Um, you might have to wait 45 minutes uh, is one thing. Um, but when you actually do get to speak to someone, um, it's as though you uh, it's talk, chalk and cheese, right? So that's an example of where an organization is, is, is out of alignment from a brand point of view. So uh, the strong brands um, have all of that aligned and unified. So that doesn't matter where uh, a, a customer or um, uh, an audience member will enter the ecosystem, but they get a similar sense of mm. what it's about. Yeah. Mm. Um, Can you give us an example, perhaps, Darren, of where you have... <clears throat> now, my voice is going wonky. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Can you give us an example, maybe, of an organisation that you've worked with in the last you know, 10, 12 years with your agency where they've come to you and things haven't been lined up and they haven't been necessarily having the type of success internally or externally um, mm. that they wanted to have and where you've been able to do the work with them and then be able to look back now and see, yep, they're hitting their goals, um, they've transformed their organisation um, and maybe just sort of something, an example like that, because I know you've worked with hundreds of organisations and there's probably some now retrospectively that you can look back at and say, yeah, look at, look at where they're going now in the market. Um, can, I give, can I give you two quick examples? Yes, please. I know you did one, but I'll give you two quick ones. So one is a, is a, um, a not-for-profit organisation, a community health organisation, and they um, recently merged a number of organisations together, changed the name, and, and then uh, worked out all the detail later. So, which, which sometimes happens with um, mergers and acquisitions. So, this, this organization didn't really know who they were and why, why they mattered because it had, there was just a new name and logo plonked on the door. Um, and you had three antecedent organizations that had um, legacy cultures, legacy uh, brand strategy, uh, all coming together. So it was a bit of a bit of a, um, I'll, I'll just say a patchwork quilt. Uh, so there wasn't there there, there wasn't a a, a, a a clear sense of who we are, and therefore how we communicate to our varying audiences. How that impacted the organisation was funders 
um, uh, they didn't know the value proposition of the organization because it hadn't actually been worked out internally yet. Right. Uh, and that's really important with fund funders, of course. Uh, with their consumers at different parts of the organization, they didn't really, they were a bit confused about one, firstly, why things had changed, and two, what's the, what's, what's the, what was the value to them for that, right? So we went through a process of, of consulting um, a representative sample across the organization, about 1,800 staff, and um, found a, um, a consensus position on this is who we are going forward, this is who we are and why we matter, and that's going to be the unifying narrative for, for everything that we do in the organization. So the, the second uh, example is an is a engineering consultancy. There's that engineering again. Uh, <laughs> and they, they don't get branding. They, you know, they, just, they just build bridges or design bridges. And um, so fairly old school in, when it comes to marketing and branding and and they they just felt that they, they needed a bit of a spruce up so we came in and did a strategy for them and consulted uh, you know um, um a good part of the business and they um <clears throat> they were sort of didn't really understand what we were doing and why we we're doing it even though we did explain it to them because it was a bit we just said look trust trust us uh, on this journey anyway so their key business problem was they weren't getting the quality of work. Uh, they were missing out to the tier ones, and they were tier two, but they needed to, they weren't punching above their weight. Um, and it was really holding the business back. We did this rebrand and really uncovered what is it that, what's in the DNA that makes them remarkable, communicated that through um, their visual and their, and their, um, uh, their, beh their behaviors. And uh, it made a massive difference to the business. Not only that, so I think they've doubled in size and had to get a new office. Um, but uh, it also was a, a real mindset change for the senior management. So you've gone from being um, having directors, three directors that are pretty old school and think, think brand is the logo. And then suddenly you've got them um, embracing brand and actually being a champion for brand in their own organizations. Um, mm -hmm. So that gives you perhaps a couple of contrasting examples. Yeah, fantastic. Great. Thank you for sharing those. If we move on to um, the next question, and mm. I know that you've got, we've touched on this briefly in the last um, two questions, but I know yeah. that you've got some really clear thoughts on that. And that is in today's very competitive world, yeah. why is it critical to have a strong brand in today, specifically today's world? Yeah, so <clears throat> there's, a, there's about four big mega trends, yeah? Uh, one is the pace of technology, and I talk about this in, 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 in the book, actually. Um, so we're at an unprecedented, um, we're seeing an unprecedented rate of, of change in technology. Um, we're seeing um, global borders uh, being more and, well, it depends on the day, doesn't it? Uh, watching the news, but more and more uh, less relevant. Um, um, Globalisation, and uh, also, uh, I've, I forgot what the other ones are. There were some some big hairy scary ones. Um, um, yeah, uh, there's, there's there's a number of, of, of mega trends that uh, in competition is 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 very much on the increase in, in, in a lot of uh, industries. And they are very much, those, those forces are very much interrelated and feed off each other too. So um, the paradox is why do a lot of CEOs, CFOs, who ultimately have the, um, the uh, authority to make investment decisions in businesses around brand and marketing, why are they not investing more in brand or understanding more in brand when it's very clear, uh, I think, that brand is one of the very few things that we can control to some extent mm -hmm. and influence our future. Um, so in this, in, this, in this 
time of, of, of extraordinary flux and uh, volatility. Um, um, brand is, 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 is a, uh, it's really an anchor, uh, should be an anchor for organisations, you know. We invest in our brand and, and it, it, will, it will pay off and it does pay off. Uh, and uh, in my experience, probably about 80% of, of Australia's small to medium sized um, enterprises, their CEOs and their CFOs don't understand brand. They think it's a logo and it's a missed opportunity, I think. I, I, did I answer your question or did I? Um, get you have, up? you have. And we're going to jump into shortly, how do you know if your organisation brand is working for you and mm. whether your organisation brand is working against you? And I think we can kind of unpack some of these really salient points in yeah. these next couple of questions. So that's absolutely fantastic. And I think the takeaway there is that it can anchor you <laughs> in a world that's constantly changing. Yeah. Uh, and not just you as the, um, you know, the owner manager of that organization or the founder or the CEO, but everybody, everyone feeling that sense of being anchored into something um, that's strong um, yeah. through, through the waters, I guess. If I can just add there that a lot of, we have uh, a lot of com conversations, Saturday conversations with marketing directors, marketing managers, fundraising managers, and the, uh, their focus in terms of their budget spend is tends to be on direct responsibility, direct response activities. So uh, revenue generating, short term revenue generating activities. So in terms of focusing on, well, this is going to pay off in 20, 12, 24 months time. Um, that's the investment that's hard for them to get oftentimes, not always, but oftentimes. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. Excellent. I'm going to let you have a glass of water while I just quickly share a couple of things with our audience today. Thank you for joining us here live today. And hello to you if you are watching this on our new YouTube channel, The Exchange. Hello to the people into the future. This is a, <laughs> a new thing for us to have all of this um, recorded and available to you on our YouTube channel. So we're super excited about that. And I just want to share with you quickly and show you a couple of things and then we'll quickly come back to Darren. Um, the Exchange YouTube channel is live. Um, there's a quick look at it. We have our first 100 questions and answers from Ask X Factor Live available there ready for you to watch. Um, it's just gone live in the last nine days and we've had a thousand views already, which is really exciting for everyone here at the collective to see that this is something that people want and need. There isn't a video library like this that we've been able to find anywhere in the world and we want to build it out to 500 videos, helpful videos to help you on any question that you might have, you can come to this library, see if it's there, connect, um, hear from some of our members in the X Factor Collective as well and get to know them through this way. So super excited about that. Please um, have a look when you've got time and let us know your thoughts on that. Um, the videos here from Darren's session today will also be available on that in the next couple of weeks and we'll let you know once they're live so you can go back and watch some of this great content again. Um, also, just to let you know that we've got three weeks only left of Ask X Factor Live for this year. And I'm just going to show you quickly um, who we've got coming up over the next couple of weeks. We have next week a great session on research and data and using insights um, more wisely. And I'm just um, in the background here pulling that up so I can show you. Um, and we've got two exceptional women from the X Factor Collective who are going to be um, sharing some new ways of using research and insights more meaningfully um, in your organisation. So if that's something that you're thinking about for next year, um, what can we be doing? How can we be informing our strategy? What research might we need to undertake? Or what might already exist in the market that we can overlay with our current understanding of our organisation? So we've got Brenda Mainland and Annette Herschel um, on the show next week. Um, and then we've got the final two weeks. Uh, Rebel um, Black, who's got the best name in the country, will be here on the 5th of December. Rebel is a business coach and works with a lot of um, SMEs around Australia. She's an incredible woman with a network called the Rural Women. And she's worked specifically with women in rural and regional areas. She's got a really exquisite knowledge of what it takes to build a business, run a business, and has been an entrepreneur for 25 years. So we're delighted to have Rebel in the community. And then finishing up for the year, B Corp is a huge big movement that's now uh, here in Australia. We've got three, 400 B Corps in Australia 
Um, and this is about businesses being able to put their hand on their heart in a big way and have certification around that the business that they run has a social, environmental um, and community dividend. So if that's something that you're interested in um, for your business or for people that you know that have businesses, come and listen to Leanne. She's helped um, businesses navigate through B Corp certification, um, exquisite change maker coach, and she's going to be here sharing her knowledge on the 12th of December. So please feel free to come and join us um, in those sessions. But let's jump back into um, our day here today with brand strategist and consultant Darren Taylor. Thanks for joining us today, Darren. I really appreciate it. We know you're at a conference there in Sydney and you've come out especially to share your knowledge with us today. So thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. So let's jump into the next couple of questions. And I'm really excited about these ones because now we can get into a bit of the nitty gritty. And what I'm really interested in hearing uh, from you today is, first of all, is how do you know if your brand is working for you? Okay, that's a very good question. So um, there are many things that you can do. Um, I'm going to talk, focus on the on the um, uh, the ones that are quite um, easily executed by. Um, smaller businesses and organizations. So um, <clears throat> one of the things that I do is when I meet uh, boards and, um, and directors of businesses is, is I ask them, sometimes um, separately, uh, sometimes together, ask them, so, uh, so you've been going for 20 years and you're a successful organization. So can you tell me why you exist? And... And oftentimes, so that might be the chair, might be the board of directors, it might be the, the executives. Um, I have gone into workshops uh, just like that and uh, everyone is on the same page. And they don't have to think about it. They, 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 they know what it is. It's just part of, it's just part of them. It's part of, the, part, of the, part of the organization. And it's actually led by the top, right? So... Um, and then, you know, the, the, the opposite, of course, is going to an organisation and, um, and asking the receptionist um, um, who has the values um, etched in marble behind her <laughs> and asking her, what, can, she, can she tell you what they are? Uh, <laughs> um, and she has it back to it every day and, and, and not being able to tell you. And then you, you, you go to the, um, the, you speak to the CEO and they're shuffling through paper trying to, to tell you. So that is a very, uh, uh, I suppose, a, a very um, um, uh, blunt instrument to, to, to establish where the brand's working on. But it's, it, it's an interesting one. So brand is led from the top. And if there isn't a brand culture in the organisation, um, the brand's not going to be healthy, period. Uh, so how do you know that it's working? Well, you know that um, from a sales point of view, you know that uh, uh, customers are coming to you unsolicited and you're a destination. I want you. Uh, and, 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 and the fact that there are cheaper alternatives or, or substitutes is irrelevant. I want you. Um, and... <clears throat> Uh, you're getting a lot of referrals. So referrals are the, um, some of you may have heard of the NPS scoring, Net Promoter Score. So um, some organisations do that study on a rolling basis, which is a very good way to, um, to establish, um, uh, I suppose, brand health at a, at a, at a high level. Um, but what are, we, what, are we, what are we looking for? I suppose the things that we're looking for in a... In a uh, for a brand to be working well is that it's part of culture. I've talked about that. The second thing is that we, uh, people know about us. So that's perhaps more relevant to external audiences. It's, it's, it's all very well to be, for us to be remarkable, but if they don't know about us, it's, it's, um, it's, um, it's a bit of a waste of time. Um, and the, the third one is how do they perceive you? So, um, so some people might know the X collective, X factor collective. Oh, I've heard of it, but they don't know much about that. They, they can't tell you anything 
any, with any detail about it. Um, so, uh, so what we're wanting, a, a, a brand that is really healthy is you have a healthy brand culture that's, that cascades throughout the organization, led from the top, and then you have um, um, uh, strong awareness in the marketplace and perception that equals what you want your brand to say. Remember we talked about the, the uh, definition before? So as, as um, designed by its creator and perceived by the world. So um, if we want to be all about simplicity and uh, changing the world through um, fashion, um, and that's what, our, that's what our customers or the market tells us, and there's some things that we can do to actually measure that on an ongoing basis. Yeah. So, um, um, okay. excellent, yeah. excellent. Okay, so that's how we know some of the ways that we can test if our brand is working uh, for us. Let's let's look at the other side of the coin. What would be some of the telltale signs mm. that your brand is working against you? Really, yeah. really interested in you know some really tangible examples of how it's working against us that we can go away and think about that, take that back into our organizations today and talk about that with others. Yeah. So um, how often does it happen when you, you, you go into organizations and you might have a, a development team of um, 10 and the bequest lady is just, it might be a, a man, uh, the, the bequest person is an absolute gun and bringing in lots of bequests and then the uh, uh, other, other forms of, fundraising uh, people are, are less effective. Um, that could be because they are not um, um, strongly representing the brand. So a, 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 a related example is in a sales organisation. So you have a, a sales person who's actually very, very good at, at closing deals. And then you have another one who can't really get past first base because he finds it very difficult to articulate the value proposition of the organization or that it's actually different to what it really should be so that's an that's an example so you your your um, customer facing revenue generating activities are patchy there's there's not uniformity to that mm -hmm. and there's obviously other factors in terms of people and motivation and skill sets and so on. But the brand can be a big part of that. And, um, and, and other things where it's, 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 not, it's not working well is uh, <laughs> you've, you've got uh, an organization that's, that, that has rebranded and is continually using the legacy um, brand identities, for instance. So, um, so that, that, that's, that's an example of well, we don't we don't value brand enough to in, to launch our new brand and make it make it make it important enough for people to observe those new guidelines, for instance. So that's a that's a that's a, a it can be a real issue, um, and quite frustrating for those who have spent time and money in in investing in that new brand evolution. So um, there, there's a couple of examples. Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. That's great. Thank you so much for that. Um, if you've got questions, we're here for another 15 minutes with Darren. If you've got any burning questions to ask, please feel free to pop them there in the chat box or the Q&A box um, here today and we can jump on to that. Just, uh, we've got a couple more questions with Darren to go. We're going to look at whose job is it to make sure that the organisation brand is in good shape? That's a really great um, question that we're going to answer in a minute. And also, what are some of the simple things that you can do and take away into your organisation today to strengthen your brand? So we're going to look at those in just a second. But before we do, I'm just going to quickly show you how you can find out a bit more about this amazing man, Darren, um, on our xfactorcollective.com website, all of our uh, members, consultants and coaches have their own profile page. So let me just show you there. You can jump on and Darren has his own page. You can read up a little bit more about his areas of specialization and some testimonials there from people that have worked with him. Feel free to jump in and have a look at that. 
Also, Darren is offering everyone a 30 minute phone brand review. So if you want to take advantage of that, you can jump onto our, we have some really cool names at the um, <laughs> X Factor Collective. You can jump onto the cafe section of our website and you'll see there that we've got a range of different coaching packages and workshops um, and, and opportunities to connect with our members. And you'll see there that you can click on that and get some information. You can also get a free download of Darren's book, which I'm about to show you. Um, so this is Rebranding Branding by Darren Taylor. It's a great book. It transformed the way that I think about um, brand when I read it and I haven't seen anyone else explain it in such a way. So you can get a free download of that as a PDF, which is very generous of Darren to share that with everyone. So we'll give you more information in our follow-up email as well. And for those who are watching it on YouTube into the future, if you look down below, there's some information and some links there as well. So um, you can jump on there. One other quick thing, just so you know about our community, the heart and the hub of the X Factor Collective is called the Concierge. Um, why not? Why not have um, really great names for the different parts of our, of our business? And the Concierge is the human part of our organisation, where if you don't know what you need and you don't know um, who to connect to in our community, all you need to do is just call Concierge. So um, just calling that up for you now there on our website, you can click on that. You can email us anytime, you can jump on the phone, you can ask a question. Um, we can do um, some needs analysis work with you as well if you're not sure where to start but you know that you need some help and point you in the right direction. And also look at um, your budget and talk to you about maybe some of the ways that you can get the most bang for, for your buck um, and some of the thinking um, from, from the concierge to support you there. So a really supportive function um, of the X Factor Collective and something that is completely new and different, talking about different and differentiation. Um, there's nothing like that that exists in the market. And we're really proud of it and we'll be growing it um, in a very strong way next year. So thank you for your support um, this year with us getting the X Factor Collective launched and for being here at Ask X Factor Live. So let's jump back into the last couple of questions here, Darren. I'm so uh, interested to hear your thoughts on this one because um, I have often seen walking into an organisation not entirely sure that anyone is taking responsibility of the brand and nurturing it and looking after it. Um, and so I'm really interested in your thoughts on this question is whose job is it to make sure an organised brand, an organisation's brand is in good shape? Yeah, so very good question. And ultimately it, uh, it comes to the CEO um and 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 the board will also be a great influencer on on them um and <clears throat> it's 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 also up to the the cmo or the the marketing director or the marketing manager um but it tends to be uh to get brand investments the the marketing manager director has to go higher with a business case to say we need to invest in brand because we're having these challenges and and our marketing activities aren't 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 as effective as they could be or whatever the, the reason may be. Um, so it's 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 absolutely the um, uh, the CEO and I would I would actually if I was a if I was a marketing manager I would be um, asking my CEO, um, coaching my CEO on on their brand knowledge gaps, um, and I think that's uh, um, because even if they do approve funding to to to, to do some work uh, on brand, uh, it's it's important that they understand it and that they will champion it and that they will uh, be advocates for it. So I think that's that's absolutely important. But ultimately, brand needs to be lived and breathed and understood by everyone in the organization, but it needs to come from the top. I think that's a really, really great point that you make there about the value of coaching. Yeah. <laughs> coaching in the brand knowledge gaps um, with someone who's making those investment decisions. And I know in your book, there's another plug for the book, but in your book, there's a point there that you talk about the frustrations of people that go and invest in a brand strategy and do all of this work. And then they won't actually do the implementation. Do you yeah. know, like it just, it, the, 
the value of implementing it properly across every touch point is not seen as important. So I guess um, the value of having those internal advocates for the brand yeah. and how, you know, if someone watching this video now, if they were in that situation where it's like, you know, we've done all this great work and it's not going anywhere, mm -hmm. how might someone like that actually, you know, fill some of those knowledge gaps with their boss? You know, like what might be some of the suggestions that you make for people in those roles? Obviously, it's, uh, it's very much uh, dependent on the relationship you have with that person. But I would be trip feeding interesting articles that uh, uh, appropriately position the uh, to address those those gaps and that they're actually palatable uh, because people are not going to read things that they're not really interested in you know they're, they're, so you've got to make it so something that's diagrammatic something that's reasonably short something that's punchy uh, and that's one of the reasons that uh, we wrote rebranding branding as a in a, in a novel style. So it's a business book, but it's actually written in, in the style of a novel because it would be more interesting to, to, to read. So that hopefully they wouldn't be able to put it down. So, yeah. 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 Um, but I think there, there are a number of, there are um, a very, very good selection of, of great books. And I'm very happy to, to suggest, um, um, make that make my suggestions available to, to people that, that could be good resources um, to to drip feed to, to, to them also yeah yeah um, yeah that would be great if we could get a list and, and just be able to share that with people and help um, because it sometimes is and I've seen it sometimes it is one person who's just championing you know we need to do work on the brand we need to do work on the brand and it is this like lone voice in an organization um, but being yeah. able to equip them and tool them up you know we can certainly um you know share some more tools and tactics for people where, where, where you want your your executives to be is to go from uh varying uh i suppose um uh, apache understanding of brand to brand is existentially important to our organization's future performance and sustainability and without it uh it's it, it's as important as is our governance and our risk and our um, accounting yeah great yeah. fantastic yeah. we've got a comment here from carolyn carolyn says currently our brand articulation is about expressing how awesome we are bigger better than other hospitals this does not enable us to engage with donors effectively yeah how to align, develop a brand articulation that provides competitive advantage across all key stakeholders. Um, yeah. so Carolyn, just, just checking, is that your question? If you can just uh, reply to this in the chat box, is your question, how do you align and develop the brand articulation that provides that competitive advantage? Is that, that's how I understand the question, just if you could just confirm that for us there. And maybe Darren, you can help. Yes, please, Carolyn says. Um, can you share your thoughts on that with us, Darren? Oh, absolutely. So, um, Carolyn, it's a very interesting question. And um, I would say um, that there are, there are a number of organisations that I've worked with uh, who have said that they feel that they're talking to themselves with their brand. Um, and it's, it's very myopic. It's very, aren't we fabulous, aren't we? But <clears throat> um, if you've gone through a brand definition exercise, and establish that what makes you remarkable as a as an organisation is that we're the we're the best at um, uh, serving serving customers in a hospital contact con context. If that is indeed what what uh, where you land with that, it it also needs to be something that is competitively differentiated and re needed relevant for for the consumer. So. What I would suggest that you do is uh, is maybe go through a process of of reviewing what that brand concept is or that brand platform is, getting agreement on it, and then <clears throat> um, you can quite cost effectively do some research, uh, go out to some of your your existing constituency and maybe some prospective ones to test that internal articulation 
to ensure that one, it's actually um, consistent with current uh, uh, consumers, customers experience, and two, is something that the, the market really wants. Because it's all very well um, drinking your own Kool-Aid and getting very excited about it, but if no one wants it, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a bit meaningless. So yeah, we've gone through that process with a number of organizations and the discovery of, well, we're not, um, what we thought was really important to the market actually isn't that important to the market. So we have to relook at that. So um, it's an interesting, interesting question. Um, did that, does that answer your, your, your question, Carolyn? Yeah, Carolyn, maybe pop a little note there in the chat box and let us know if that's helpful. I guess this whole bigger, better, faster is a concept that we've sort of um, ended up with in marketing, really, to be, you know, to sort of go out and say that's what we are. But I guess it's also coming back to that, as you say, that existential question of like, why do we exist and what is our purpose and all of those deeper, higher level order um, thinking that is is behind being the biggest or the best. Yeah. Um, so for organisations like that, Darren, do you, is it, is it also about being able to go past those points of saying that we're the biggest hospital or the best hospital and to, you know, well, why do we actually even exist in those more meaningful brand essence type yeah. conversations? Is that what it's about? Yeah, I think some fundamentals around that, the, the brand definition process internally is that it needs to be, you need to consult a representative sample of the organization and it needs to be moderated uh, or facilitated by probably an outside person, consultant, um, because it, 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 it needs to be, it's, it's that point where it, it's, it is challenged or can be challenged um, because a lot of organizations a lot of organisations um, don't know what they don't know. So um, you see that on the websites. You know, we are we are the best in the southern hemisphere at all of that. And you know, and and all these claims, um, which which are not credible, oftentimes, um, and don't don't serve the brand justice. Yeah. Great. Carolyn's just said yes. She says she thinks that the research will allow the donors to have a voice directly with our internal brand keepers. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. The, the consultation process is, is very important and that needs to be designed carefully. Yeah. Mm. That's great. Well, hopefully that helps you, Carolyn, and you can perhaps even share one of these videos back with your colleagues. One of the earlier questions might help support that conversation um, with, with your other team members and people in brand and marketing within the hospital to understand how that's going to help you and advance the development team to be able to have some of those donor insights. So let us know how you go to Carolyn, please keep us informed. And obviously Darren's offered a 30 minute uh, free brand review and I'm sure he would be very happy to speak with you and give you some, you know, some more targeted insights there. Um, talking on your behalf, Darren, hope you don't mind me <laughs> suggesting that. Um, some fun. tips on how you might be able to go about that and perhaps even be able to bring Darren in to help moderate and facilitate that type of those type of insights to to really help take the hospital ahead um, great so thank you for that Carolyn let's jump into our couple final questions um, here Darren is for people that are listening and watching this back on our uh, channel on the exchange yeah. Yeah. What are some of the simple things that an organisation can do and maybe yeah. take away today and start today? Um, yeah. What are some of the simple things that organisations can, can, to do, can do to strengthen their brand? Yeah, great. I think the first one is be deliberate. By that I mean brand doesn't happen by accident. Brand happens by design and discipline. So unless you have uh, a brand strategy and you start aligning all the different parts of, the, of your organisation to that, which, which is the daily grind, um, you, um, you're not acting purposefully. So brand has to be built from the inside out. And 
um, and from the top down. So <clears throat> you need to get the key stakeholders uh, engaged, which we've talked a lot, and educated and excited about the opportunity of brand. Um, and I should say, um, I, I have experienced this in a number of situations um, with not-for-profits is um, that they don't like calling brand brand. It's as though it's far, it's too commercial. So I've been told not to use brand and, and in fact, um, speak about it as um, image or reputation. Um, but I think we need to talk about it as brand. It's brand, you know. Um, and um, I think getting a, getting a baseline of, of, of your brand health is really important. What are you actually dealing with here? And this will help in your business case conversations with your uh, with next up um, directors. So how are we sitting from a, an awareness and a perception point of view? We can do, you can do that with your existing client base very easily with, with a, a well-designed customer survey. Um, and it's really powerful to do, that, to do that on a rolling basis. So you don't have to uh, spend tens of thousands of dollars on that. So you, it, it can be easily um, executed. Um, and, and of course, there are a lot, 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 lot more other more sophisticated um, methods of uh, gauging brand health and tracking brand health. Um, so, and then I think it's, it's, it's about make, implanting brand as being something that happens every day and every moment in the business. So there's four ways of brand that can be communicated. It's through the products and services, through the behavior of people, through the environment, the physical environment, and through the communications, which are obvious ones. So the communications tend to be the most mature and most aligned to the brand definition if, you, if that's been done. Um, the real clincher is the behavioral piece, getting everyone in the organization to be able to tell you why, who, 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 the, organization, who the organization is and why they matter, and the values and bit to stand up and tell you because it is, it's, 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 it's not rote learnt. It's, this is, this is, this is, this is how we do things around here. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and engaging team leaders and various uh, uh, levels within the organisation to, to to really embed that. Of course, it's got to come ultimately from the top, but brand culture is a very, very inexpensive way of building a very strong brand. Um, so it just takes effort, understanding, um, and, and discipline. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Great. There's some really fantastic tips there on how to strengthen your brand. Hopefully you can use some of those today, share them with your team and yeah, start making a difference in your workplace uh, today. Why not? Um, we've got one final question. It is 11 o'clock. Can you believe the hour has gone so quick? Um, but this one is for some of the smaller organisations, this question, and we're really interested in some tips here, Darren. If an organisation, a small organisation, doesn't have budget to bring in a brand agency or bring in external brand consultants, um, what would be some simple tips and some sim simple ways that they could actually have a strong brand strategy and be able to implement um, and apply some of the principles that we've talked about today? Right. Yeah. So uh, there are some, I suppose, some core principles that you really need to be able to articulate and agree on within the organisation. Um, and they are your value proposition, why do people pay money for, or donate money or interact with you? What's the value exchanged? Um, the unique value proposition, what makes that different to you? Um, and positioning, how are we positioned in the minds of, how do we want to be positioned in the minds of our, of our audiences? Now, staff, for instance, um, we want to be an employer of choice. Um, uh, customers, we want them to feel that uh, we are 
absolutely on their side and the category leader for what we do, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we define, define um, a number of those statements. There could be a couple of other ones like um, our, our purpose, vision, mission, values. Um, uh, so there's probably about eight, eight, seven or eight statements that if you can get a workshop within your, in your business and, and, and come to a, an agreement on it, um, then you start um, promulgating that throughout the organization. Yeah, so that's, that's a very simple thing you can do. Um, I think the other thing is that, um, uh, yeah, I think get a, get, a, get a baseline for research as well. Yeah, great. And you mentioned before in an earlier question that you can do a bit of DIY with a survey. Um, and I'm sure there's probably for people that don't have, you know, budget at hand, that there's probably a few templates and ideas online as well that they can apply to um, understanding a bit around the perception of their organisation and, and doing a little bit of research and a survey that way. Would that yeah. be that would be something that small organisations could do as well? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Great. Fantastic. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for sharing all of your beautiful knowledge with us today, Darren. Very, very much appreciated um, you taking the time to prepare for today and share yourself with us. That is Ask X Factor Live week 15 uh, done. Um, we are here for the next three Wednesdays, the last three weeks of Ask X Factor Live. Um, please feel free to jump in, tell other people about the program. Um, you will receive a PDF on email as well that does show the full program and the last couple of weeks of what's available there as well. Please feel free to share your feedback with us as well and let us know what did you like about Ask X Factor Live today? How can we improve? We do want to expand this into 2019 and so all of your feedback and insights are very valuable to us. So thank you so much, Darren. Have a beautiful rest of your day in Sydney. Thank you everybody for being here today. It's been a pleasure having you and talking about the wonderful topic of brand. Have a beautiful day, everybody. All the best.